The quality of Spidey games has certainly fluctuated throughout the years. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best and worst Spider-Man games. For more gaming videos, check out our new spin-off channel, Mojo Plays, for in-depth reviews, thoughtful video essays, detailed character origins, and insightful commentary. Mojo Plays. Game smarter. For this list, we'll be looking at five of the best and five of the absolute worst Spider-Man video games and ranking them based on a mixture of critical reception, commercial success, and legacy. 18 and over? Huh, how does he think he is? Number five worst, Spider-Man 3. All that fuss over Larry? Man, JJ is gonna blow a fuse. 2007 really wasn't a great year for Spidey fans. Spider-Man 3 was considered an enormous disappointment by many, and the companion video game wasn't all that good either. Treyarch, the developers behind the brilliant Spider-Man 2, returned to develop the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions of the game. And while everyone expected this next-generation Spider-Man to swing straight into our hearts, he ended up falling face-first on the pavement below. The talents of the movie's cast and the brilliant web-swinging mechanics were wasted on a game with numerous bugs, lackluster next-gen graphics, an infuriating camera, and unstimulating combat mechanics. It's not really a bad game. It's just so average that it hurts. Number 5 Best, Spider-Man Web of Shadows While Web of Shadows certainly wasn't perfect, it was better than Spider-Man 3, and it showed a true representation of what could be accomplished with Spidey on next-generation hardware. The game had its fair share of problems, including a weak story and numerous technical issues, but the gameplay made up for its shortcomings. The 3D combat system was interesting and fun to explore, and the game contained a ton of variety in its gameplay mechanics and objectives, including many intriguing boss fights. The game isn't great, but it helped reinvigorate interest in Spider-Man video games after a massively disappointing title. I'm not sure what's going on. Look, I'm a screw-up, okay? You think? You do a heist for Kingpin, try to kill me. I was working from the inside. Number 4 Worst, Spider-Man. There were plenty of fantastic and groundbreaking video games released for the Atari. Spider-Man was not one of them. The game was released in 1982 and served as the very first Spider-Man video game. Spidey deserved better than this, though. The entire game revolves around you scaling a tall building with your webs and avoiding enemies and bombs. We can't knock it too much considering it's nearly 40 years old, but damn is it boring. Not only that, but the web mechanic is incredibly touchy and sensitive. So you'll spend the majority of your time falling and screaming at the TV, adamant that your web attached to a section of that building. It's a frustrating mess. Number 4 Best, Spider-Man Nearly 20 years after the release of Spider-Man on the Atari, Neversoft released Spider-Man for the PlayStation, and it is arguably the first truly great Spider-Man video game. The technical aspects of the game were astounding for the time, including the incredible graphics and voice acting. But it's the gameplay that is the true star here. The game contained a marvelous blend of platforming, fighting, and shooting, and included a ton of interesting collectibles and extras that kept gamers playing for hours on end. Spider-Man is one of Spidey's very best outings, and one of the most entertaining games released for the PlayStation. Venom's got control of the Jumbotron in Times Square. He's been ranting for hours with a message for you. Venom's ugly face on that big screen? Now that's scary. Number 3 Worst, Spider-Man, Friend or Foe? Short-range teleporter pulled you out of the fray. Somebody wake the computer up. It's time to get to work. Friend or Foe was yet another incredibly disappointing piece of Spider-Man related entertainment released in 2007. Honestly, it's a miracle the franchise even rebounded back after all this nonsense. Friend or Foe is a reimagining of the Spider-Man film trilogy with a more humorous twist and with gameplay that centers around defeating various bosses and converting them to allies. The game contained some fun co-op shenanigans, but it was far too repetitive, and the combat mechanics simply weren't varied or interesting enough for continued investment. It's an utterly average and by-the-numbers action game, a title without purpose or personality. 
Number 3 Best Ultimate Spider Man. I envy you guys. You're happy just between walking cliches. Seriously, good for you. But come on, guys, leave the lady alone. Ultimate Spider Man is another home run by the classic Treyarch and Activision team, and is easily one of the best and most unique Spider Man games to ever be released. Throughout the game, you alternate between Spider Man and Venom, and each have their own unique gameplay and combat mechanics. Spider Man controls and acts as you would expect whereas Venom can perform massive jumps, throw cars, and literally eat people. It's quite dark. It's a little on the short side and can be too frustrating for casual players, but the unique comic book style and diverse compelling gameplay make Ultimate Spider-Man a true Spidey classic. My feet still attached. <laughs> Number 2 Worst, Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six. Look, we're not hating on these old games just because they're old. They're truly bad games. And Return of the Sinister Six is even worse than the Atari original. The game was published by the infamous LJN for the NES in 1992. It was a verbatim copy of the numerous side-scrolling beat-em-ups littered throughout arcades in the late 80s and early 90s, only completely terrible. The controls were sloppy, the levels were a poorly designed mess, and the hit and platform detection was non-responsive 99% of the time. LJN was notoriously terrible, and this video game only perpetuated their horrible reputation. Number 2 Best, Spider-Man 2 Spider-Man 2 is often considered one of the best superhero movies of all time, and the accompanying video game is one of the greatest pieces of Spider-Man related entertainment. Manhattan was not only large and detailed, but it was filled with a variety of crimes and collectibles for the completionists. The combat was fun and the villain satisfying to fight, but perhaps the best aspect was the web swinging mechanic. No longer did Spider-Man simply shoot webs into the sky, now you actually had to swing from buildings. It was a marked improvement over its predecessor that not only helped distinguish Spider-Man 2 from the rest, but provided the most authentic Spider-Man experience of the time. None of your cheap theatrics today, Cretan. I see Osborne was too weak stomach to kill you. No matter, I'll take great pleasure in rending you limb from limb myself. Number 1 Worst, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I'll never stop looking for Uncle Ben's killer. Never. Don't confuse Spider-Man 2 with The Amazing Spider-Man 2. One is arguably the greatest Spider-Man game ever created, the other is arguably the worst Spider-Man game ever created. You see the difference? It's clear that this game was rushed to coincide with the movie, because it encapsulates everything that makes a poor Spider-Man video game. The controls and camera were horrific and insanely frustrating. The story was uninspired. The graphics were poor, the combat was boring, and the AI stupid, providing little challenge. And worst of all, the game was littered with game-breaking and immersion-shattering bugs. It was a total mess that reeked of tie-in cash grab. Get this off me! Thank you. I was so scared. Number one best, Marvel Spider-Man. Yeah. Okay, okay, so just pretend we're putting it that way. But we, we, like, I don't, why the fuck wouldn't it be, it's literally the best Spider-Man game. Like, I don't know. Why the fuck? Why the fuck would Spider-Man Two be better than fucking this Spider-Man game? Like, I, I like what hipster is gonna be like? Uh, I preferred the. Hey guys, so the new Spider-Man game just came out. We did a crazy review on Mojo Plays. Check it out over here. Back to the video. Well, this is it, guys. The hype was real, and Insomniac didn't disappoint. This game is a perfect amalgamation of Spider-Man essentials, and it provides the most authentic and exciting Spider-Man experience on a video game system ever. Not only are the graphics fantastic and the city of Manhattan expansive, but the combat system is detailed and instinctive, allowing us to truly feel like Spider-Man for the very first time. The altering between Spider-Man and Peter Parker is also an interesting mechanic, and the original concept of playing a slightly older Peter Parker allows the game to explore some intriguing story directions and themes. Sorry Spider-Man 2, but it looks like you've finally been dethroned. And it's about time. Wait, you? Do you agree with our picks? 
Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.